Hello everyone, and welcome back to Fableheim and the Legend of Keepers. It's alive! Sorry to keep you waiting. In case you missed the post or didn't, no. I have been fighting off the plague. I avoided COVID for two years. But it was inevitable, and I got it. It's a little more complicated because a piece of my immune system is missing, and I have an under a few underlying conditions that made it worse, but... I am almost back to tip-top shape. I'd say about 85%. I still have a lingering sore throat and slight cough and congestion. So the episodes are going to be a little bit shorter. We're going to cut each banner like perfectly into half. They're about 43 weeks baseline. So we're going to go for about 22 weeks. And then we'll end. I'll say goodbye. And then we'll be back to finish it off. So the long-awaited third banner of Anchanchu is at long last here. Thank you for your patience and your understanding. Hopefully, we can go without too much complication. As always, we'll be increasing the gold gains to high and lowering the master's life to low because, ideally, Anchanshu never gets touched. Mm, I will hide here and wait. We are delighted to offer a promotion. I don't remember what these <laughs> what these do. Oh, right, this is uh, Serral's promotion, but there's a passive. Okay, okay, okay. 30% chance to also apply their penalties to other heroes. I think this could be really good for this chapter. So we're gonna take it. I do like extreme compression as well, though. What does this come with? Fire weakness in the back? Uh, sure, whatever. I'll take the passive. As always, I'm gonna take a look at our team, and I'll get back to you with what I think we're gonna do. We have the team, most of them we've seen before. I just had to refresh my memory. In the first room, this room is probably going to, or these rooms are probably going to change, but that's going to wait until once we train. We have the skeleton bull, Chad, the suck, Lilith, and the giant Ara, Ara, Ara. And in the second room, we have Kale Thos, the skeleton magus, Brand, the legend, and of course, the brand new unit, Quaxel Cordal. Of course, a longtime supporter of the channel, thank you. And to everyone else who continues to support the channel, despite my random hiatuses, I appreciate you greatly. Now, my theory for how this run is supposed to work, because we also have been given the... Oh dear. The thing that activates Solar Blessing. I think what the game wants us to do is burn things and then delete it with Brand. And in order for that to happen, we of course have to upgrade Brand first at the trainer. This consumes stacks of burn and just like yeets and deletes everything. So the perfect combo is, of course, to have Kaelthos apply of three burn and then have Brand delete it. We've seen this and done this before. So, um, you know, this isn't entirely exciting, but it's been a while, so we'll see. We, of course, do we want to have, like, this sacrificial front room? Because, <laughs> I mean, Chad, Kaelthos, and Brand all kind of go together really well. Well... We'll see what we can find. The R&D manager needs a guinea pig. Uh-oh. He is asking you to provide him with one of your employees in exchange for some gold. I do still wish I could see the map when I'm looking at this, but I think Lilith is going to go away. Goodbye, suck. Look, there's a merchant there. Perfect. Calculated. By chance, you meet a tamer traveling through the region and looking for some work. The traveler offers to train one of your employees at half price. If you have the right employee in your employ, you could even negotiate for him to work for three. We unfortunately do not have the Black Widow. Uh, is this is Grief Weaver? Black Widow, that's what she is. And leveling up Quaxel Codal for 200 instead of 400 seems like a bargain. So what does good old Quaxel Codal get at level two? If Solar Blessing is active when the Quaxel Codal is about to die, deactivates the Blessing and regenerates for 50% of its maximum life. Oh. Congratulations, Quaxel Codal. You are semi-immortal. Good. Now we are going to need to visit this merchant because we kind of sold one of our characters. Hmm. Level 2 Skeleton Soldier. All right. Let's pick up Unhoplite. We need a tank, okay? That's it. That's all. We need a tank. We have found a tank. GG. As of the first fight, I believe it is always a monster. You can correct me if I'm wrong. 
And I think we're going to try this. The first room is basically sacrificial. And the second room is where the magic happens. So, you know, let us see how this goes. We're, of course, going to do the hardest fight because I may not remember how to play the game, but I ain't scared of no ghost. I feel like they did this on purpose. So our entire strategy is fire, right? Well, <laughs> most of this team is weak or resilient against fire. So, you know, there's that. Let's apply some fire weakness and make them less resilient against it. Well, I don't think that's actually going to come into play here. We have the Onamush, Onamusha leading the line. Of course, dealing fire damage to the front unit, which was randomly moved courtesy of the Enchanter. Honestly, as long as Unhoplite wasn't in the front, it, did, it, it didn't matter to me. He's also going to gain flame shields. Can't be affected by Demoralize, but we're not doing that. We have the Enchanter who moved everybody. And I remembered this time that it's only for the first fight. I was very impressed with myself. He's going to hit everyone and apply Elemental Weakness. Uh, double Elemental Weakness. Great. And we have the Invoker. The character that does, um, you know, both. Fire and Ice. Cannot be affected by penalties dealing damage or morale over time, which is really not good. Also, if we activate the Solar Blessing, that will empower everyone except the Enchanter, which is great. Sorry, did I say great? I meant not great. Ooh. Oh, right. I was going to say, Ara Ara lived, uh, but then he didn't. Great. This is going well. Very well. Good, good. This is Unhoplite moving, and I think... What does Unhoplite want to do? I think we want to bleed. Unhoplite does have the benefit of reducing... Oh, dear. Reducing uh, damage taken, monsters behind him, but of course he was moved, so that's not a thing that's happening right now. My second trap, or excuse me, my first trap here is going to activate the Solar Blessing, well, uh, which is sketchy, but I was kind of just ex hoping that this would, you know, let us win. We'll see. As far as our spells are concerned, I think we just yeet and delete this guy. That seems like a great idea to me. And when he dies, he'll afflict Burn. But of course, she cannot be affected by Burn, which kind of goes against my entire plan here. Right. I'm sure I'll be fine. We have a disaster here. I guess we do the slow. She can't be affected by Frostbite, so there's like literally no point. I'm expecting the Enchanter to just fall over, in case that wasn't readily apparent. I'm hoping anyway. He is the only one on the team weak to fire, so this plan is going to be very effective. And I think good old Quaxacodal is just going to yeet the... Oh, yeah. Oh. Quack. You glorious beast, you. So, yeah. This worked out well. Um, I'm a little concerned that our front line... Uh, sure. That our first room is kind of dying as a glorious sacrifice to the Dark Gods, but, um, you know, we can overcome that. Hey, look, it's the Grief Weaver. I love this character so much. Doesn't exactly play into our plan, but... Someone mentioned that I was greatly underestimating the effectiveness of the Skeleton Scientist. Uh, because the Enhanced Trap is pretty good. And you know what? I don't remember your name, but you may be onto something there. I've never used this character before. And of course, we have the gargoyle. All right, let's take Frederick. Frederick. Not a bad name. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, Ara. Ara, Ara. Only lost one hit point. We could go to the merchant and look for another monster, but I'm kind of inclined not to. We could go to the engineer and upgrade our traps, but I'm kind of inclined to save our money for the trainer. What does upgrading the Fire Blessing Trap do? Senor Archivist, if you would be so kind as to inform me. I forgot how terrible I was at finding these things here. Here we go. Alright. 
40 damage, 50 damage, 65 damage. That could be a substantial amount of damage, my friends. But I think it's better that we save it for the trainer here. So let's YOLO. <laughs> a headhunter is here to show you a promising monster he has spotted on the job market. Do you wish to recruit him? Uh, yes. This is one of my favorite characters. Good old Abaddon. The Infernal Guardian. He also applies fire weakness. Would you like to know how that plays into our strategy? <laughs> He's also a sub a phenomenal tank. So let's go to the trainer and see who we can uh, train. Getting Chad to level 2 is really good for his passive. What about you, Frederick? You are so squishy. Hmm. Ara, ara. Can lose 10 of his max life and gain slowed, but he gets a second action this turn. That might not be bad. Could also just upgrade Kale Thos. Oh, or we could upgrade Brand, who kind of does our entire plan. I think I'm going to upgrade Chad, though, uh, because I do like Chad. Uh, this could be fine. It could be terrible. Yours affected by Burn lose 30 speed. Oh, wow. Oh, sending out Chad seems a little terrifying. This plays really well into our plan, though, Mr. Abaddon. Alright, we'll send out Abaddon. Let me YOLO. A strange gentleman, in the guise of a toy manufacturer, knocks on your door and offers to sell you a range of amusing items. You request nothing in exchange other than the materials to create them. A strange and troubling force physically prevents you from declining. So we can sacrifice Ara Ara to get the Bewitched Glove, which probably doesn't play too well into what we're doing. It could be okay, though. We could give up 15 Blood, which we do possess, to get the Pocket Mirror, which is one of the best defensive items in the game. I love this one. Or we can give up 35 Life to get the Horn of Plenty, which gives a 20% chance to deal crit when attacking. I think I'm going to take the mirror, because if we find the Miraculous Pill, that is a disgustingly good combo. And this can keep Brand alive. So speaking of the Miraculous Pill, let's go roll the die on an artifact, shall we? This could be very intriguing. For once, our fire strategy is actually going to work well on everyone except the Dragon Knight, who is a little terrifying. But, let's see what we can do. Also, the Harpooner here is incredibly weak to fire, so. For our first room here, I tried something a little bit different. We aren't going to be activating the Blessing, because I am a little bit afraid of the Dragon Knight, and we don't really make use of it here. So we have Federic here, who is in the front line. I don't really have a clever name for him, so I just left his one, which is fun to say. Even though, <laughs> I'm sure I'm butchering it. Unfortunately... The Templar here is very resilient against air, so we'll just be yeeting out the toxins. We are fighting the Templar, who's going to deal air damage to the front line. Frederic does, oh my dear lord, does have shell, courtesy of Chad. So there is that. But um, we'll see how, how effective that really is. She's also going to replace one of her penalties with a bonus, but that's fine. We don't care. She also restores morale, but thankfully, uh, we don't care this time. Get some Flame of Wrath, sure. Get some fire going. The Dragon Knight, who is always terrifying, he is going to go ahead and kill on Hoplite because on Hoplite took a giant harpoon to the face. Uh, which is unfortunate, but, you know, it'd be what it'd be. Eat. That was only 33 damage. He could have survived, too. Ah, oh, well. And, of course, the Harpooner, the ever-present nuisance. But she is very weak to fire, so I'm sure her life is going to be very miserable here soon. Thankfully. Yeah, look at this. We get... Has the mirror gone off yet? I don't think it has. Hit Chad. She hits the slowest target, right? Lel. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where the pocket mirror is amazing. Chad, you can do it! 
Unless I can slow them, Chad isn't... Nope. Okay, great. Even with the tarball, she was still faster, huh? Well, that empowered this trap, which is going to yeet and delete. Two of them? Wow. That was some good damage. Now it's probably in our interest to upgrade the trap if we're going to do that strategy. Was that a reflection? Well, okay. All right, quack. Let's add this burn and then kill him with his own resistance. 60% fire resist. Brand cares not. I love this combo, by the way. This is a great combo. Aww. Hey, Quack is back. <laughs> Welcome back, Quack. Oh my. The two bird stone attacks, targeting only the hero at the front, deal 30% of their final damage to the hero positioned behind the target. I see this artifact all of the time. And every time I see it, I feel like I mentioned that it's pretty good for what we're doing. Because it is. The Crystal Skull, 25% chance that monsters defeated come back to life as a skeleton warrior. I think we've used this once. And only once. Eh, it was okay. The Obsidian Dagger. Solar Blessing increases bleeding damage dealt to heroes by 100%. Lunar Blessing, monsters definitively gain 5 power when they kill a hero. Wasn't this changed? I feel like it always did what the Lunar Blessing effect is. Now, for the record, this is obscenely good. But, but, we do not use the Lunar Blessing in the slightest, and I have no interest in using it. And the Bleeding effect is ah, not really good for what we're doing. So we're going to be taking the Two-Bird Stone, because that is the most effective for what we're doing. Chad, unfortunately, is dying. I mean, you know, his will to live is dying sort of thing. The Engineer, we have no money. So, um, hey Doc, everything seems in order, it's true. So we can plunder or we can business trip. Abaddon's coming back in 10 turns. Uh, plunder is probably the safer option? Maybe? Mm. This is a chance for things to go wrong. The shortest tr business trip is five weeks. We can send out someone, I think. What do we got? So sending out Kael'thas or Brand is both um, undesirable, we'll say. What is this? Applies burn three to all heroes when a demon is defeated. Demon. Demon. So I have Brand and Abaddon. This synergizes quite well, but... I think Brand's the best one to send out, but Brand is pretty important to what we're doing. It's fine. I believe. I instantly regret my decision. <laughs> An employee found a strange, unlabeled flask while cleaning it and is about to drink it without even checking if it is poisonous. You recognize it as an evolution elixir. Will you let them drink it, or will you take it for yourself? Or sell it? Um, there you go. That's fine. <sighs> Here's some blood, bro. The suit and tie vampires are here to collect taxes. However, blood is more valuable than gold coins to them. They could even grant you a monetary compensation in exchange for blood collection, and you would exceptionally be exempted from taxes. We'll pay the blood. It's every drop of blood that we possess, but that's okay. Now, if you were going to ask me if I regret my decision, my answer would be an emphatic I regret everything! I regret everything I've ever done! Not all is lost. Just mostly lost. I believe that we can still do this. Probably. We're putting a lot of weight on Quaxacotl and Kale Thos, but I mostly sort of kind of believe in them. A necromancer knows much about fate. Would you like me to tell you what it is? Um, 
I'm concerned. However, however, there is hope. Not much hope, but some hope. Um... It's probably best that I hit this guy. So we're fighting a Concertist, who is, of course, the supreme nuisance. He's going to apply dodge to someone. If I hit the Herbalist, he's going to give dodge to her. Which might be okay, actually. Getting rid of her is probably a good idea. We'll do that. I don't know if that was the correct choice, by the way. In the front room, of course. I'm hoping that we can just live a little bit. <laughs> So the Necromancer is the bane of my existence most of the time. She, of course, attacks the back with ice attacks, brings back a dead hero to life as a skeletal warrior, and gains enrage when losing morale. Thankfully, we aren't doing any morale shit today, so that effect is completely ignored. The Herbalist is leaving the front line once again. I still have no idea why she always does this, but she'll be attacking the back with nature and applying the elemental weakness, so, you know... There's that. I think if Ara Ara does this, he'll get a... He'll actually get a chance to use his second turn. Because the only thing hitting him is Eduardo. So I'm going to try this. I'm confused as to... Okay, whatever. Let's drop that dodge, shall we? Frederick is going to get yeeted and deleted. But that's okay. It happens. We're going to activate the Solar Blessing, I think. You are weak to air, though. But activating the Solar Blessing here is good. It would only empower Eduardo. And we're probably going to need that. Although... She hasn't gone yet. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you go twice? Nope. What was the point of Peck then? Well. <laughs> Yeeted and deleted. I really want to do Impalement, but I think it's a good idea to try and kill her. Although, of course, she'll come back as a skeleton, but hey. What are you going to do about that? Ara Ara is probably dead. Yep. Farewell. Oh! <gasps> Lives at one and then bleeds out. Okay. Well, our trap is empowered. She healed, but I think the trap is going to do it. Maybe? Oof. Not quite. Now, this restores morale, so we're fine. And now we're relying on the A team here. Of course. This does not work out well. <laughs> Alright. We eat a fireball at the back, then we do the nature AoE. Actually, we'll just do this. We'll eat it, but we'll gain the buff here. Solar Blessing is active, so this will imply burn. But it's probably in our best interest if we just kill the Concertist. I'm being a little greedy here. We'll see how this goes. We did slow the Concertist, courtesy of the Tarball. Unfortunately, Chad is going to die here. What can you do? We're going to kill the Concertist so that he doesn't bleed me. Plaxocoto is going to get a second turn. He is going to, once again, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Just go Inferno. If Quaxelcotl dies, uh, it's not over. Because he will deactivate the Sun Blessing and come back to life. And get another turn. Cool. Well done, Quack. Unfortunately, now you are dead, Den. You can do it, Kalthos! Do I have to kill the Skeleton Warrior as well? I do. Okay. But... Oh, I think we can do it. With the traps and the master spell. Wow, this was close. 
uh, fire weakness. Are we actually going to see on Shanshu in action here? Fire mortar, let's go. We are. Hey, on Shanshu. <laughs> All right, well, Gigi. I still feel like Anshanshu has the most powerful attacks of all the Lord's Masters. Monsters placed at the front deal 2% additional damage per missing life percentage. This is pretty good. Lure. This is a trap, okay. Applies multi-action to the next regular trap. Huh. Is there a world where we can stack Lure and Frederick's thing to go off three times? Because if there is, the mirror going off three times is probably really strong. Or the Skeletal Lord here. The Skeletal Lord is pretty good because he provides an obscene amount of elemental resistances. And he can do a lot of damage. Alright. Let's get Kel'Thuzad in here. Now, unfortunately, we have a lot of decisions to make. All of them are pretty bad. <laughs> Let's see. Remove. Remove. Oh, dear. Is there a, um... I think I just fish... Hold on, let's pull all of these guys out for real quick. I think I just fished for motivation events. A trainee has spilled a burning hot drink on you in front of the blood spice latte machine. Puck my life. I can insult... We're going to insult him. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. You bet. Placed a bet on a ball racing game during lunch break. The one you chose finished first and you won the jackpot. You could also use your winnings to throw a party. Party it is. This improves my spells, right? Blood and smoke. The spirits answer your call. What powers will you demand from them? Will you sacrifice an employee to satisfy their thirst for life? No. <laughs> Applied slowed one to all monsters when a hero is defeated. That seems good. I also want to learn extreme compression. I just realized. Hmm. That no, I can't. Well, no one's going to level four. Okay, never mind. Let's let's learn extreme compression, shall we? This morale thing could be good, too. But, um... We'll take the compression. Alrighty. I am a little concerned. But I also want another artifact. <laughs> you know? So, we can put two people away. And I think if I had to choose, which of course I do... I don't understand the point of Peck. I really don't. We need a hoplite for the armor, just in case something bad happens, so... I think this is what we'll go with. Abaddon will be returning to us after this fight, so I hope we grab a good artifact here, and then we can train to our heart's content next week. This worked out surprisingly well. So I'm satisfied. Look at this damage. Oh, we are fighting a Tim This actually looks very familiar. A Templar, who will deal air damage to the first target, but that is why Kel'Thuzad is here. With his 40% air resistance. The Dragon Knight, of course, who's going to yeet his spear into the center position. But guess who's there to eat it? This is why I didn't put on Hoplite away. And of course, we have Frederick here just to be annoying. Uh, as one does. And he can eat this dodge from the Virtuoso. Which is very nice. Very nice. Applies one random penalty. Yeah, sure. 
Poison, poison, and broken armor. Cool. Now, the Templar does have bonus resistances, which is kind of annoying. But we'll do our best to overcome that. Ow. <laughs> Alright, bye, Kalthazan. That hurt quite a lot. That's okay. This team didn't exist in order to kill things. I do have some air resistance. Ooh. Jump on hoplite. It's okay. Less good job. Well, anyway. I wonder if this will kill the virtuoso. Eat. Did that not go off twice? I'm a little confused. Hmm. Anyway. Goodbye. I wonder what happens to the bounty if he dies on that screen. I feel like I've pondered that before and I still don't know the answer. Eh, frostbite. Or slow. But slow. Let our team here do some work. Now, thankfully, we are going to absolutely yeet and delete this Templar. So that's pretty nifty. Yeet. Ooh, look at that. You are unbelievably dead. Just unbelievably dead. Ah, good. good. Welcome back, Quack. <laughs> good to see you. Unfortunately, this won't apply burn, but, you know. We're setting up Brand for success. I guess we'll set up the Morning Star. And goodbye. This combo is so good. <laughs> Alrighty. The Hypnotic Bumblebee. Slowed also reduces Hero's power by 30. This synergizes very well with the Tarball. And I think it's what we're picking. Prank Pie, the first attack suffered by each hero applies easy target. Damage taken from traps increased by 100%. So, there is a world out there where we can line this up with the multi-action of the mirror, but I feel like the multi-action isn't working. So, I don't know. The Horn of Plenty monsters have a 20% chance to deal a critical strike. We're going to take the Hypnotic Bumblebee. I like not dying. Not dying is pretty sweet. Unfortunately, we're going to have to have more people thrown into J, I mean the garrison, for their lack of efforts. Quaxocotl has done so much work that I think he deserves to be level 3. Of course, Bran deserves to be level 3. And... Uh, else deserves to be level 3. Kael'thas, Chad, Unhoplites. I like how cheap Kael'thas is to level up. Like, he's so strong, but he's so cheap at the same time. Chad plus this front attack is so good. Alright, we'll go with Chad. The man. The myth, the legend. Level 4 Chad is really good. Ooh, Therapist. Unfortunately, I don't have the funds. Ah. Fine. Thank you for your efforts. While dusting the dungeon, the cleaning goblin has freed a monster caught in a spider's web. He also accidentally woke up a giant spider queen who demands compensation for the destruction of her web. So we're going to keep our blood, so I'll just punch it real fast. And... We have acquired Minda, who I love. I love Minda. There's not an H in your name, is there? No, there's not. This is one of my favorite spirits, just because it reminds me so much of Minda. It's perfect. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of synergy with Minda. But that's not going to stop me from using her. She's pretty effective, you know? She can deal ice damage, which we currently have one other source of, courtesy of Kel'Thuzad. And she can break armor, which would empower Quaxacodal. 
and on Hoplite should we choose to do that sort of combo. Last one for today, another yellow. Do you have a moment to spare to talk about our lord and tormentor, Gulthar, the Destroyer? Sure, yeah. I feel like that event was changed as well. Wasn't that... Didn't that used to just be killing them? Maybe not. That might not be true. And just like that, look at that. Our team has recovered. We'll throw on Hoplite into the garrison to get him back to full, hopefully. And we'll see where we can go from there. But that will all have to be for next time. We will be fighting... I don't know. I guess the veterans. Sure. That's the well. Is that healing? Hmm. That could suck. But we'll see. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I'm trying to come back where I'm going to slowly ease into it, as I mentioned earlier. My throat already hurts. <laughs> but thank you for your patience and your support as I have been battling COVID. And a special thanks to all of the patrons and channel members who support the channel. I greatly appreciate you. And if you would like to stay up to date with anything happening, feel free to join the Discord in the description down below. And I will see you all next time to finish off week three and continue to bask in the glory of the Quaxel Coral. Bye-bye.